Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 95. Day, day 3095. 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 95. We are dealing with the concept of Venn diagram, the notion of Venn diagram on page number 300. We started this series on Venn diagram four, four days ago uh, on day number 91, 91, 92, 93, 94. We have done it four times already and this is our fifth in the last of the uh, of the five five videos, and each one of the, each one of those two five days, uh, we uh, in the last four days we've been doing we had done we had done two problems in each one of those previous four days, and today we'll do two more, hence the total of ten problems. Problem number nine and problem number ten. My God, that was a very difficult explanation, wasn't it? Problem number nine. As you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We are told that 900 students were surveyed. A survey was done of 900 students on a college campus. And these were the findings. The findings, findings are as follows. 40% of the students said they like to listen to music. They were asked, what activities do you engage in? What is your leisurely activity? What do you do for, 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 for leisure? And this 40% said they like to listen to music. 30% said they like to play sports. And 75% said they like to read. We were also told that all liked at least one of these three activities. All liked at least one of these three activities. In other words, none liked no activities. There was nobody out of those 900 students who told us, oh, I don't like any of these three activities. There was, there was everybody, every, every one of those 900 students said that they like at least one of these three activities. Do you understand? What is the significance of that? The significance is, is the, of this statement is that when we plot, when we draw the universals, universal set, there will be no entry in the universal set because everybody likes to do something. Everybody likes one of these three activities. In other words, none likes no activity. We are further told that 35% like exactly two activities. That's a very important bit of information we'll see in a second. The question was, how many like exactly one of these three activities? How many like exactly one of these three activities? And these are the answer choices, 315, 375, 395, 40, and 585. We need the room, obviously, so we can erase all of this thing. You have the information, we'll plot the Venn diagram. Let's keep the top three lines there, because we're going to need them as we... But remember, 35% 35, 35 of people said they like exactly two activities. So here are three, three sets. People who like music. And there are 40% we are told, people who like sports, and there were 30 people who said that, and people who like to read, and there were 75 such people. First thing you notice here is that, notice we are doing it in percentages. We are doing it in percentages. We are paying no attention to the fact that 900 students were surveyed. There is no point. There is absolutely no bloody point in wasting your time trying to figure out what is 40% 900, what is 30% 900, so on and so forth. Do the entire problem in terms of percentages. If you're doing it in percentages, remember that your figures had to add to 100. And once you have the final percentage to answer the question, whatever it is being asked here, for example, here they're asking how many like exactly one of these three activities. We'll have the percentage for that, and once we have the percentage, we can figure out uh, that percentage of 900. Do you understand? But we'll do it at the very end. We'll do it at the very end. Let's keep going. So first thing first, we are told that 35 people, 35 percentage rather, we are saying 35 people because we are doing it in percentage, we are told that 35 percentage, 35 percent of the students, respondents, said that they like exactly two of these activities. Where can we put 35? Exactly two of these activities. Can we put 35 here? The answer is no. 35 percent, listen very carefully, 35 people could not have possibly said to us that they like music and sports given the fact that there are only 30 students who said they like sports. So if there are only 30 students who said they like sports, we cannot have 35 people who are saying they like both. 35, we cannot put it here. Can we put all 35, can we put all 35 here? Answer again is no, because there are only 30 people who like sports. Therefore, we cannot have 35 people who like both sports and reading. 
We could put 35 here if you like. That is possible because this figure is bigger than 35. We could put 35 here or we could put 10, 10, 15 or 15, 15 uh, and 5. There are a thousand different possibilities. Do you understand? Let's just put 35 here. Let's just keep it simple. So 35 people like music and reading the way we are setting it up. These 35 people are the same people of the, the same 40 people who sold, told us they like music. We cannot double count them. We cannot count them twice. So as soon as we put the 35 there, we have to go back and adjust it. It becomes only 5. It becomes only 5. Similarly, once we put 35 here, these 35 people are the same people who like to read. We cannot count them twice. Once we put 35 here, we need to subtract 35 from here. 70 minus 35 would have been exactly 35, so it's going to be 40. What else is there? That's about it. This problem was very simple. The fact that we are told that 35 people like two activities, that's about it. We have to figure out how many people like exact how many people like all of these three activities. How many people like all of these three activities? That's the next part we have to figure out. Let's do it here, shall we? We're gonna erase all of this thing. Music, sports and reading. Remember, music, sports and reading. Music, sports and reading. Okay, watch what happens. So the way we are setting it up here, we have five people who are saying they like music only, right here. We have 30 people who say that they like sports only. We have 40 people, 40 people who say they like to read only. And then we have 35 people, 35 people, 35 people who who like music and reading. Let's see what they, what they add up to. Let's see what they add up to. 5 plus 5 is 10, that's a 0, carry 1. 3 plus 3 is 6 and 4 plus 1 is... 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 plus 6 is 11. We get 110. Since we are doing it in percentages, it cannot be more than 100. It cannot be more than 100, we are getting 110. What's going on? This 110 is a very significant figure. This 110 is going to tell us how many people are being triple counted. People who are going to go here are being counted three times as it stands, as we have set it up so far, which is why we're getting the wrong figure. We're getting a total of 110. We cannot have 100, 110% of people, obviously. What's going on? What does this 10 tell us? The, what is this, the fact that it is 10 more than the actual number of people it's 10 more than the actual number of people. 100 is the actual number of people. We're getting 110. What does this 10 tell us? Let's take a look at it, shall we? Let's, take a, let's understand what this 10 tells us with a simple example. With a simple example. Or can we put it here? Let's do it out here. Let's do it out here. Here. Watch what happens. There are some people, there are some people sitting in the room. In that room there are some people there. I want you to go and count how many people are sitting in that room. Do you understand? So you go in that room, you have large, you go in the room and you start counting how many people are there. Let's count, shall we? Let's count how many people are there, how many people there are. So here's the counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, there are seven people in the room. There are seven people in the room. I'm going to do it. Let's raise these answers because we can, so we can have the room. There are seven people in the room. Well, clearly there aren't seven people in the room. I can clearly see, everybody can clearly see, there are only three people in the room. Where is, why are we getting four more than actual number of count? Why are we getting this surplus of four? What does this four tell us? This four, the surplus of four, tells us that two people are being counted three times. Two people are being triple counted. Two people are being triple counted, which is why we have a surplus of four. You see, this Mr. B, Mr. B, this one first first time when you count it is fine, but then you go ahead and count it again. And then you count it again the third time. That's where the two extra is coming from. Mr. C, the first time when we counted it, it was fine. But then you go ahead and count it one more time. And then you count it the third time. There is a surplus of two there. That surplus of two and that surplus of two is where we're getting four. So the four tells us that two people are being counted three times. This 10, this 10 tells us, this 10 tells us that 5 people, this implies, this implies that 5 people are being triple counted. 5 people, 
by people are being triple counted. Why do these five people go? Well, they are triple counted because they like all of these three activities. The people who like all of these three activities belong here, right here. Voila! Then what happens? Well, as soon as we put that five there, as soon as we put that five there, this 35 cannot change because the problem tells us that exactly 35 people like two activities. So that cannot change. Exactly 35 people like two activities. Well, as soon as we put a five there, that five has to be accounted for. These five people who like all of these three activities are the same exact five people who like music. We cannot count them twice. This five has to be stored in a different color. This five now becomes zero. In other words, in other words, there was nobody in this 900 students that we surveyed who said that I only like music, the way we are setting it up. Similarly, as soon as we put a 5 here, we have to adjust the fact, we have to account for the fact that these 5 people are the exact same people who like sports. Out of these 30 people, 5 people like other two activities as well. We cannot count them twice. This 30 has to become 25. And similarly, this 40 will become 35 because these 40 people who like reading, out of those 40 people, 5 people also like music and reading, music and sports. Now we are all done. These figures should add up to 100. They better add up to 100. Let's see if they do or not. We need the room. So we are up to here. See, we are up to here. And it's no longer 110. Watch what happens. It's no longer 110. Five people like all three. All three. And that figure, these figures should add up to 100. These figures better, better add up to 100. And if they do not, then something has gone wrong. Or well, they do not, obviously, I can see here because it's 15. What the bloody hell? Oh, because uh, we have to adjust the figures, you see? People who like music only is zero now. It's no longer five, it's just zero. It's just zero. It's no longer five, it's zero, a big fat zero. People who like sports only is not 30, it's 25. And the people who like to read, uh, people who like to read, only like to read, are 30, not 40, or 35 rather. And that 35 will remain fixed because it, is, it was given to us in the problem. We can never change the thing because it was given to us. We were told that exactly 35 people like two of these activities. Now these figure better are up to 100. 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 20. That's a big fat zero. Carry 2. 2 plus 2 is 4 and 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 4 is 10. Voila. There you go. Now we can answer the question that they're asking for. The question was how many people like exactly one activity is right here. Exactly one activity is. I'm going to erase this thing because, because instead of redoing it. Exactly one activity is zero people. There is nobody here who just likes music. There are 25 people out of 100 who like sports only. There are 35 people who like to read only. These are the three categories we're looking for. Only one question was how many liked exactly one of these activities? The answer is 60%. Let's erase this thing. The answer is 60%. 60% of 900, 60% of 900, 6 nines are 54, and therefore the answer is 540. 540 people out of 900 like exactly one activity. That's all. The same problem, and we did it, we did it with the method of Venn diagram because that is the topic that we're covering. But the same problem could very easily have been done algebraically. It's just a matter of preference. The Venn diagram is just a tool. It's a very nice tool. It's a very handy tool. It's a very useful tool. Very efficient tool. But it's not the only tool. We could have very easily, we could have just as well done this problem algebraically. Would you like to do it algebraically? Let's do it together, shall we? Let's do it algebraically. Whenever we are solving a problem algebraically, it is vital, it is essential, it is crucial, it is absolutely imperative that you define your unknown. You must define your unknown if you're going to solve something algebraically. So let's define our unknown. So there are going to be three unknowns here. The people who like just one activity, people who like two activities exactly, and people who like all three of the activities. So let 
let x represent the people I'm then going to write all of this down let x represent the people the people who like exactly one activity okay that's our first variable then similarly let y represent the people who like exactly two of these activities two of these activities and finally we're going to have third variable z which will represent the people who like exactly three or or, or better yet who like all three activities all three activities oh, those are the three unknowns and therefore by definition therefore by definition people who like exactly one activities and the number of people who like exactly two activities and the number of people who like exactly uh, the number of people who like all three of these activities has to add up to 100 percent has to add up to 100 that's our first equation then we move on to the fact that again i shouldn't have erased all the figures because now we need the figures let's erase this thing we're done with all of this thing the way it was given to us i'm going to quickly put it on as quickly as I can we were told that 40% we were told that 40% like music we were told that 30% 30% like sports and we were told that 75% like to read let's add up these figures 40 plus 30 is 70 and 70 plus 75 is going to be 70 plus 70 would have been 140 so it's 145 what does this 145 represent? This 145, the reason we're getting 145, even though it cannot go over 100, is because of the fact that in this 145, some people are being double counted. Some people are being double counted, people who are taking two subjects, people who are rather people who like two activities. Some people are being triple counted, which is why we are getting 145. So 145 represents the number of people who like exactly one activities, they are counted once obviously. People who like two activities, which is number of people who like two activities is Y, and those people are being double counted. Similarly, it includes, this 145 includes, the people who like all three of the activities, Z, and they are being triple counted. Those are the two, that's, that's our one equation, this is our other equation. There we go. That's what we need to work with. Is that enough? Is this enough? The answer is no. The answer is a resounding no because we have, as it stands, as it stands on the blackboard, we have three variables, three unknowns, x, y, and z, and only two independent equations. We cannot solve for three unknowns with just two independent equations. We need a third equation. Otherwise, we can't solve it. It has infinite solutions then. Where is the third equation? Third equation comes from the fact that we were told that exactly we were told that exactly 35% like two activities. Do you remember that? We were told that exactly 35% like exact, exactly 35% like two activities. But well, the people who like two activities are being represented by letter Y. Y equals 35. Those are the people who like exactly two activities. And there is our third equation. Voila. Number of people who like two activities is being represented by letter Y and the problem tells us that there are 35 such people. Now we have three independent equations we can get going, shall we? Very first thing we're going to do is we can substitute the value of Y in this equation. So we can end up with X plus 35 plus Z equals 100 and therefore X plus Z is going to equal 100 minus 40 would have been 60 so it's 65. That's our first equation, equation number one. Let's substitute here. So we end up with 145 equals x plus 2 times y, 2 times 35, plus 3z. 2 times 35 is 70. 140 minus 70 would have been exactly 70. Therefore, 145 minus 70 is going to be 75. So this implies that 75 must equal x plus 3z. Don't get confused with my 3 and this is my 3 and this is my z. Do you understand? Don't get confused. That's a 3 and that's a z. 
There you go. We have two very simple equations, x plus y, x plus z equals 65, and x plus 3z equals 75. Let's work on those two and we'll have the answer. Let's do it on the top here. x plus z equals 65 and x plus 3 z equals 75. Let's put, let's call this equation 2. And let's call this equation 1. Let's put equation 2 first. It really doesn't matter, but let's put equation 2 first. Equation 2 tells us that x plus 3 z equals 75. Equation 1 tells us that x plus z, x plus z equals 65. Let's subtract the first equation. Let's subtract equation number one. Let's subtract equation number one from equation number two, the way we set it up here. And if you're going to subtract one equation from this other one, then it's always a good idea to change the signs of the coefficient of the equation that is being subtracted. The equation that is being subtracted here is equation number one. Let's change the sign, co signs of all the coefficients. This is positive, it becomes negative. If you're going to subtract it, this positive is going to become negative. This 65 is positive, it's going to become negative. That was the whole idea, because x minus x now drops out, and we end up with 3z minus z is going to end up with 2z equals 65, 75 minus 65, which is a 10, and therefore z equals 5. Voila. Which is exactly what we found when we, do it with, when we did the problem with Venn diagram. We found that exactly 5% of the people like all three activities. It was not given to us, we deduced it. Once we have the value of z, we can figure out how many people like exactly one activity, which is the x, which is right here. We don't have to do anything, right here. We don't have to do anything. If z is 5, x must be 60. 60% 60 of the people who like exactly one activity. There is your x. That's all. And of course, y was given to us. That's all it is. Let's do one more problem. Let's do one more problem. I need a little break. So, excuse me. I need to catch my breath. Let's do one more. Problem number 10. Problem number 10, we are told that in a group of 40 students, this is number 10, the last one in the series of 10 questions. These are not in the book, so don't try to look for them. We are told that in a group of 40 students, let me change the marker. This marker has no life in it. It is moribund. It is dead. In a group of 40 students, we are told that 22, 22 are taking algebra. We are told that 18 are taking biology. We are told that 14 are taking chemistry. So far so good. We are further told that 9 of these 40 students are taking algebra and biology. Five are taking, I mustn't go too fast because I don't want to muck it up. Muck it up with an M as in Mary, do you understand? Not F. Seven are taking algebra and chemistry, we are told. Five are taking biology and chemistry. And we are told that two are taking all three subjects, all three subjects. Here's the question. The question is, if we were to pick, if we were to pick one student, if we were to pick one student at random, what are the odds, what are the odds that the student 
is taking only one subject. What are the odds a student is taking one subject? What are the odds of picking such a student if you were to pick one at random out of these 40 students? Second question, what are the odds of picking one student at random among these 40 students that he is taking, that he or she is taking no subjects? Follow. What I want you to do at this point is to pause the video, pause the video, do the problem yourself, and then once you have done so, then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together. Do you understand? I'll give you five seconds, precisely five seconds, to do to, to be able to do just that. That is for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Okay? Go ahead, do it yourself. All right. We need the room, obviously, and you have the problem. So we need to erase this thing so we can work on it. So we have three sets here, Algebra, Biology and Chemistry. And here we are also going to have the complication of a universal set because there are people who are taking no subjects. So let's first draw, well let's, let's draw the three sets first so that we can put the universal set around it instead of doing the other way around. So here are the three, three sets here, Algebra, Biology and Chemistry. And because there is a possibility that there are some people who are taking no subjects, we have to draw the universal set, and right there, there is going to be a figure which is going to indicate who, is, who does not belong to any of these three sets. People who are taking neither algebra, nor biology, nor chemistry, they are not taking any of these subjects. They are going to go here. So let's get going, shall we? We are told that 22 people are taking algebra. We are told that 18 people are taking biology. We are further told that 15, 14 people are taking chemistry. What else we are told? We were also told that nine were taking, nine were taking algebra and biology. We were told that seven are taking algebra and chemistry, and five are taking biology and, and finally, finally, some some people who are taking all three of these subjects. Some people who are taking all three of these subjects, and how many there? Are, how many such people are there? And we are told that there are two such people, two are taking all such subjects. Obviously we can leave it like this because the way the figure is represented, the way the figure is represented, the Venn diagram is represented right now, there are many people who are being double counted, people who are taking two subjects are being double counted there. These nine people are the same people who are taking, 22 people who are taking algebra. These nine people are the same, same nine people out of those 18 people who are taking biology, they are being double counted, these five people are being double counted, these seven people are being double counted, these people are triple counted. So now we have to do the adjustment. Are you with me so far? Let's get going. Let's do the adjustment. When we start adjusting the figures, it's always a good idea to start from the innermost. People who are taking all three subjects. That's the only way it's going to work. We have to take away these two people are being triple counted. Do we subtract the two people from here? Do we subtract the two from here? The answer is no, this is wrong, this is no, this is wrong. Why is it wrong? Because the way is represented 22 here. What does this 2020 20 represent? The way is drawn right now. The way it is drawn, it looks like these, there are 22 people who are taking algebra only. Listen very carefully. The way is drawn, these 22 people are taking algebra only. Well, if they're taking only algebra, then they cannot possibly be taking all three subjects. It is impossible for somebody to tell me that I'm only taking algebra and I'm taking all three subjects. It's not possible. Therefore, these two people who are taking all three must come from these nine people who are taking algebra and biology. In addition to taking algebra and biology, two of these nine people are also taking chemistry. So the adjustment has to be done to nine, not to 22. Are you with me? So the nine becomes seven. Similarly, well, as soon as you put two here, these two people are the same two. These two people are the same two people that are among the five here who are taking biology and chemistry. There are five people who are taking biology and chemistry, and of those five, two are also taking algebra. So they are being double counted. They counted here at once, and they counted here. They have to be adjusted. Similarly, as soon as we put a two here, 
there are seven people who are taking algebra and chemistry and all those seven people two are also taking biology so this five becomes this seven becomes five and now we have to do the adjustment to the to this figure so what what happens there are 22 people there are 22 people who are taking algebra the way it's drawn it looks like there are 22 people who are taking only algebra but that's not the case out of those 22 people we know seven of them are also taking biology five of them are also taking chemistry and two are taking all three seven plus five is seven five plus two is seven and seven plus seven is fourteen this has this has to be adjusted by a figure of fourteen twenty two minus twelve would have been ten so it's eight it is eight Let's do a different color similarly we have two people here three people here two plus three is five five plus seven is five plus seven is twelve these 12 people that you see here are out of these 18. So out of these 18 people, some are being double counted. 10 of exactly 10 of them are being double counted, and two of them are being triple counted actually. 2 plus 5 is 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus, so you have to subtract 12 from here. There are only six people who are taking biology only. And finally, as soon as we have a two here. We have a 2 here, we have a 3 here, and we have a 5 here. 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 5 is 10. Those 10 people come from out of these 14. This has to be adjusted. There are only 4 people who are taking chemistry only. And now, if we add up the figure, and assuming that we have done our work properly, assuming that we have done our work properly, the figure should add up to what? The figure should add up to 40, because that's, that's all the number of people we have. The problem told us from the very beginning that 40 students were surveyed in a group of 40 students. They better add up to 40. If these figures do not add up to 40, then something has gone wrong. Let's check first before we answer our question. Before we answer the question, the question is this. What are the odds of picking somebody who is taking only one subject? What are the odds of picking somebody who is taking no subjects? Before we, do, before we answer these two questions, let's make sure they add up to what they are supposed to add up to. So here we go. The way it's drawn, the way we are claiming it, the way what are claiming is that eight people are taking only algebra. We are claiming that six people are taking only biology. We are claiming that four people are taking only chemistry. Six plus four is ten, so it's eighteen. Eighteen people are taking only one subject. Eighteen people are going to take, are taking only one subject. Let's keep them separate. Now let's figure out how many people are taking exactly two subjects. Five people are taking, five people are taking algebra and chemistry. Right here, five people are taking algebra and chemistry. Three are taking biology and chemistry. Seven are taking, oh sorry, yes, seven, seven are taking algebra and biology. Three plus seven is ten, so it's fifteen. 15 are taking exactly two subjects. 15 are taking exactly two subjects. And how many are taking all three subjects? How many people are taking all three subjects? The, the answer was two people. Two are taking all three. Eighteen plus two is twenty and twenty plus uh, I get 35. We should have, we should have had, oh, oh, there we go. We have not done this part. There you go. You see, that's why it's a good idea to do the check up here. I completely forgot for a second that in this problem, there is a possibility that there are some people who are taking no subjects. And that is where we're going to get this answer here. Because 18, 18 people are taking exactly one subject. 15 people are taking exactly two subjects. Two people, we are told, are taking all three of the subjects, but that's only adds up to 35. 18 plus 2 is 20, 20 plus 15 is 35, but we have 40 people. Well, the five people, five people must be are the ones who are taking no subjects at all. They are not taking any subjects. Well, there we go. We are done. Now we can answer our first question. The first question was, what are the odds that if you were to pick one student at random out of these 40 students that he's taking, he or she is taking no, no subjects? Well, there are five such people. Do it. We need the room work. Can we do it? Well, we have to raise something, obviously. So the odds of picking somebody who is taking no subjects 
is 5. 5 out of 40. And since they want it in odds in terms of percentage, percentage means we have to convert the bottom number into 40. So let's multiply top and bottom by 2.5. Two and a half times 40, of course, we know is 100. So now we have it in percentage because 40 times 2 is 80 and half of 40 is 20. So it's 100. And similarly, 5 times 2 is 10 and 5 times half it is 5 halves. It is 5 halves. One more time. One more time, let's do it in a different color. 5, 5 times 2 is 10. And 5, 5 times half, 5 times half is 5 halves. Well, 5 half is 2 and a half. In other words, in other words, 5 times 2 and a half is 12 and a half percent. What are the odds of picking somebody who is taking no subjects? Who is taking None of these three subjects out of these 40 students, the odds are finding such a person is 12.5% or 1 8 because 1 quarter is 25%. You see 1 8, 5 divided by 40, if you reduce it, it becomes 1 8. So they can, uh, they can give the answer in terms of percentages, so they, give the, they can give us the answer in terms of fractions, in which case the answer would have been 1 8 because 5 out of 40, 1 8 which of course is 12.5% because as we just explained that one quarter is 25%. If one quarter is 25% then one eighth, which is half of one quarter, must be 12.5%. The second question was, what are the odds of picking a person who is taking only one subject? What are the odds of picking a person who is taking only one subject? Well, let's find out such a person, shall we? Let's find out such a person. How many are taking only one subject? Well, here's eight people who are taking algebra. Here are six people who are taking biology, and here are four people who are taking chemistry out of 40. Out of 40. 6 plus 4 is 10, so it's 18 out of 40. And just like before, we're going to multiply top and bottom by 2.5 to convert it into percentage. Let's multiply top and bottom by 2.5, and, and just like before, 18 times 2. 18 times 2 is 36. Again, let's do it in a different color so we can see it. 18 times 2 is 36. And, and 18 halves, 18 halves are 9. 18 halves are 9 out of 100. 36 plus 9 is 45 out of 100, so it's 45 percent. Odds of picking such a person is 45 percent. And again, they could they could represent the answers in terms of percentage, or they could they could give us the answers in fractions in the exam. In which case, 14 over 18 over 40. Well, we can't divide by 9. What can we do it here? We can't divide by 4. It's just going to be 9 out of 20. 9 out of 20. Of course it's 9 out of 20, because if you multiply top and bottom by 5, 9 5 is 45, you see? So in terms of fraction, what are the odds of picking such a person? It's 9 out of 20. 9 out of 20, those are the odds of picking a person that he or she is taking exactly one, one, one subject if you were to pick that person at random. 45% chance. That was the end of the set theory. Let's see what the next topic is. The next topic, we were on page number 300. And the next topic, of course, is on the very next page, page number 301, which is a very important, very crucial uh, topic. A lot of people have trouble with, uh, with this concept here, the topic being permutations and combinations. And we're going to do, hopefully, the same idea. We're going to make a, a series of five videos, five lessons, where we'll discuss the concept of permutations and computations, and we'll do a number of problems along with it. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow for permutations and combinations, permutations versus combinations, what the bloody hell are they by now?